guys rolling? We don't really need to intro this guy. He's got the voice of an angel. Everybody and, knows him. And the hair of a Mustang, huh? <laughs> Lane Johnson joins me uh, on the Green Light Pod. Uh, Lane, a good buddy of mine, a teammate for two years in Philly. I'll take, uh, I'll take these feet off the screen. Yeah, so. you know, I think people, it's like, it's like. Uh, it's not a good look. It's, it's not a great look, <laughs> but I was going to get to that. He's the first barefoot guest we've had here on the Green Light Pod in the studios. I made him. I definitely made him take a shower. He was smelling like a wet dog when we got out of the gym earlier. I told him it was my feet because I wear these Tempur-Pedic slippers <laughs> without, without any socks on, it's and then you end up stinking. And I didn't bring my Odor Eaters Plus with me. You really have Odor Eaters Plus? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. didn't know they still made those. I yeah. thought people started wearing socks well, and <laughs> taking care of. Our their training room has them. Oh really? Heck yeah. So I was gonna say. I mean, I got a surprise visit from Lane. He was driving back down in Texas, and then. Uh, he stopped through Virginia and uh, in Lane fashion, he texted me one in the morning, hey, are you, uh, are you home? I'm like, he, well, first it was, are you up? And I'm like, don't FaceTime me, bro. I'm in, I'm in bed, the kid's sleeping and Meg's not gonna like it if the FaceTime goes off at one in the morning and I'm screaming to one of my teammates for 30 minutes, which is what I do a lot. <laughs> but he, he said, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drive down. I said, great, we'll spend a couple days. Lane is great because he makes me feel very organized. The guy has no shoes on. He lost his wallet while he was here. He had a surprise flight to Orlando, which yeah, last second, hey, good. Third consecutive Pro Bowl here. Good, good for you. He's been an All Pro, one of the best tackles I ever played against. Um, I'll get that out of the way right here. Hey man, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you churching me up right now. Hey, it's it's all good. <laughs> it's all so good so Lane joins us uh, on Green Light, and we're going to talk about a range of topics, the Pro Bowl included, um, which we both have opinions on, but. I, I guess the first question, the burning question that's going to be in the, in, the, in the comments section here is, are you having fun? I, don't, I usually don't answer dumbass questions like that, but since you, <laughs> since you asked it, I'll say yes. Hey. Is this mean, a, look is, at me. Is this a wrestling promo? Huh? Is this a wrestling promo? What? This is my what? E, eHarmony personality <laughs> profile video. Um, so, <laughs> famously, you got into it a little bit with the uh, Patriots Nation about their – yeah. Well, how did that happen? Well, I uh, I went on bar, I went on uh, Barstool and did the podcast. And uh, before, I said I'd rather win the Super Bowl than win. And Big Cat goes win five Super Bowls. So he put the five Super Bowls on there. Yeah. It didn't take a credit for 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 any of that shit for saying any of it. But <laughs> hey, I took it right on the chin and probably taking it the rest of my life. Yeah, you for, you for say being honest. We were talking about it yesterday. Uh, we were uh, we we had a nice day yesterday four-wheeling around the farm and took Lane out and see God's country, Virginia. Hey, it really is. It I, is God's country. I here. did underestimate it, and I was <laughs> had to give me a spot up here pretty damn close. I got a I'm cabin. Thinking. I got a cabin with your name off. I'll, uh, or on it. I'll break off an acre or two, and okay. it can be Lane's uh, Ponderosa. <laughs> so we were talking in the uh, in the four-wheeler, and that, that, that came up, and you said that's probably going to follow you the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, hey. In, in one region of the country. Hey, maybe on my tombstone. <laughs> Having fun. Having fun. <laughs> just just don't even put the date of birth and death. Uh, just put having you fun. You know, and I played in New England. It's uh it's a relevant conversation. Obviously, I mean, New England makes no bones about it. They're fans, they're players. Yeah. They you know, we're all business here. Yeah. So on one hand, I understand why some people might be upset with you because it seems like you were being dismissive of kind of everything they've done in their way of life up there. But on the other hand, I, I kinda you know that they lead with that. That's kind of their mo. So why you pointing out that it's not about fun up there is not it's not revolutionary. Oh, I just wanted to piss somebody off, and it worked. That's it, and it worked. For the record, I had some really great teammates up there. If it weren't for the scheme, I probably would have never found my way down to Philly, where we met and mm -hmm. became good buddies. I was down there in a yeah. three technique, and you see how that could be a problem. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I'd, I'd say the similarities was probably just because OU the. Where I went to college was pretty hardcore discipline. Yeah. So I lived that. I lived that life. Yeah. And it's good. I mean, we we, hey, we put in work and you grind. Yeah. And so, I guess it just comes down to me being jealous. As, <laughs> you heard it here. Hey, if we're being honest, is a little bit of jealousy, a little hey, bit of uh, hey. trolling, and uh, there you have it. And now it's gonna be on your tombstone, Lane Johnson. Karma, son. Hey, it comes. You're gonna live to be an old man. <laughs> and by the end of by the end of your run, they're gonna have forgotten about it because we're gonna. I mean, the the way you take care of your body, you might live to be 120. <laughs> we'll see. 
Hey, <laughs> we'll see. I, hey, what I, are we putting the over under on your mortality at? Hey, ten years, I'll let you. Hey, we'll we'll do a a re. Uh, we'll get the profile redone. Okay, good. But you do take great care of your body. We were just in the gym a little bit ago. I've never met somebody, and obviously, what this is your twenty nine now. This is going to be your eighth year coming up. Yeah, time flies. I remember when you came out of college. I swear to God, I looked at you the first time I saw you. I was like, there's no way this guy has an anchor. He's too skinny. He looks like the tight end yeah. um, that you be, that you you ended up at uh, OU from a JUCO. You started out as a tight end and a quarterback. Yeah. Um, no emergency quarterback for you this year behind Josh McCown. and uh, No, even if my, my, I had the bum ankle, so even if I wanted to, I couldn't. You couldn't do it. <laughs> no. We were about down to it, uh, and I say we. I mean, I, I still consider myself like an eagle, but I'm sitting on the couch. I say we. Hey, you're always part of Eagle, son. <laughs> um, but yeah, you started out as a tight end, and uh, you end up as, as a tackle. You come in the league, and I'm like, this guy's kind of skinny. There's no way. I'd love to test his anchor out. And then little, little did I know I had to go against you in practice for two years. Um, you have a hell of an anchor. You you anchor, to me, I don't know what it is, the way you reset your hips or you 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 anchor at the last second. There'll be a, there'll be a moment in there where I think I have you bold. And then at the last minute, you're really able to kind of arch your back. And how do you do that? Yeah, so for my rookie year, I was giving up. You know, every time I gave up an initial bull rush, I would probably stagger about three yards Yeah. just trying to catch my anchor. And then now that's kind of controlled. I think it's a lot more with the timing of the hands, Yeah. the hands and the feet. And I guess all that energy hitting at one time instead of being kind of scattered. But, you know, I guess after years of hey, taking ass whoopings, <laughs> you, better, you better learn a, a better way to cope with it. And you did, yeah. uh, because yeah, I never thought of your anchor anchor as being an issue. Um, it, it was when, an issue early in my career. But then when I got there, I I, I really uh, I thought you did a good job of learning to to set that, you know, in plenty of time. And and you do you do a lot off the field that seems to be not only like crazy shit. I'll see you in the gym doing stuff modalities I've never heard of. Tony and, Perkis, like in the yeah. heavyweights, yeah, just going a little bit overboard. Just going overboard with the extra work. I mean, you got the band work. You have uh, all types of crazy machinery. Just on, on YouTube, just just, just YouTube and different, you know, uh, conspiracy <laughs> theory type CrossFit stuff. But a lot of it, when I talk to you, seems to be very scientific and for a reason. Like it's it's intentional. It all has to do with the functionality of playing football. What's some of the stuff you do off the field that might make people kind of be? Uh, well, a lot of football is all like quad. It's all like a lot of pushing. So. You your front part of your body was your anterior side yeah. is very overloaded compared to your posterior side. So we live in a society where all we do is sit on our ass all day. And so you <laughs> lose you lose that strength and you lose a lot if you don't work on it. So I just work a lot on that side. And um, as far as recovering, uh, I think body tempering when it came in, you know, the, the big phone. So explain to people what that is because people don't know what tempering is because I didn't know what tempering was. Yeah, so basically um, instead of a phone, it's – it's built in the shape of a foam roller, but instead of a foam roller, it's a it's a big ball of steel. So it weighed like 120 pounds. And what we'll do is get on yoga mats stacked up and uh, lay on our stomachs, and we'll put that pipe and roll out your calves. Hey, <laughs> roll out the roll out the hamstrings, and basically you're getting piped up pretty good. <laughs> hey, can we be mature, please? Yeah, no problem. Be mature. Hey, and then get those back. Get your, get your back. Just a bunch of dudes in the corner of the giant dudes, like just a bunch of cave trolls. Just, in the I cave. would walk in the weight room after practice, and there would be like it's like a herd of cattle. Him, yeah. Big V. You know who else is back there? Matt Pryor. Hey, what's funny about is, is the skill players are doing it now too. See, the skill players were doing it this year. So it it started with the big guys. They get these big steel pipes, and uh, and. <laughs> They put those big steel pipes on each other, and you just, get you get like some some of the cracks are a little too much for me. They roll the the yeah. things, you know. Yeah. Uh, There's it, different methods to the madness, but a lot of it's uh, just trying to strengthen that over time, and then a lot is uh, like joint distraction. Um, so your your ankles are real big as far as your mobility. Ankle uh, flexion's huge. Ankle you do a lot huge. of ankle flexion stuff. Yeah. Well, a lot of your ankles may get stiff over time doing repetitive movements, not going to the full range and. If you ever get like a high ankle sprain, which hell, I've been getting every year yeah. so far, and it feels good. So you get that scar tissue built in there, and you got to get that scar tissue out and get your mobility back. Um, so yeah, so so that's a lot. And then obviously, you know, one thing I learned just from being around Jason Peters, uh, one thing he does every day is he'll get in the sauna. I mean, cold tubs every day, but he's always doing core work, and you should see the stuff he can do. It's pretty, it's pretty damn impressive.
He is. I'm glad you brought JP up because he's somebody that you talk about a lot, and every every O lineman that's played with him, especially the tackle. JP to me is not only a, a Hall of Famer, an all time great. Obviously in Philly, yeah. um, I played against him in Buffalo, uh, and never got a chance to play against him in Philly. But the guy is uh, is a legend. But yeah. you know, a lot of great players don't want to pass it on to younger players. Yeah. And one thing I noticed about him is he's very open with the younger players. He wants to help. That was right away too when I first got there. Yeah. And. Uh... I, don't know, I guess it's probably his, his family. And like his family, every time I met him after the game, they're always very welcoming. That's just what kind of people uh, I think they are, and that's always brought up. Um, yeah, where do you, where do you want to start with that guy? Well, we got lots of stories. How talented is he? Give me some give me so, some anecdotes yes, yes. on so, how so, talented he is. So when I because he can still beat me in a foot race, and I'm about you hate. <laughs> I don't want to admit it, but it was a few years ago. We we're in the bubble, and he was kind of running around after the after practice, and so I started running and. We got on a full blown sprint, bro, and he beat me. Oh yeah, and I was going, "What the fuck's going on around he's here?" He's about, <laughs> he's about ten years older than you, <laughs> and about forty pounds heavier. Fifty, yeah, fifty pounds heavier, guys. Uh, so when I think of just talent wise, I don't, I can't think of a guy that could be as talented as him, like in their prime, because of how you know he's six four and a half, and then he's three fifty three sixty, and and whenever I heard about that weight, I was like, "There's no way this guy can move." Like no way at all. That's you know? a mauler. That's all that you could yeah, do. Yeah, I, with I that was way. thinking slow, and then I went out there. I was like, "Bro, this dude has quickness like a DB." And I was like, "And then when I got there, my rookie year is like in his ninth or tenth year, and I see that, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, and but he then, but they, he was helpful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right away. I mean, it was. Uh, we grew up pretty. Uh, I guess we're both from Texas, so I guess our personality is pretty similar. I like to joke a lot. He likes to play around some, but just kind of clicked and. Uh, yeah, he's just like a, a beacon of knowledge. Now, if a player's struggling in, in the O-line room, he's never going to make them feel worse about themselves. They're always, he's always going to No, a lot of stuff, he'll, he'll pull you aside uh, away from kind of the, the crowd. That's kind of even when he's when he's coaching. Um, and a lot of times, I mean, even he knows young players is that you're getting told so much, you're kind of getting information overload. Yeah. And I think what he does a good job is kind of backtracking and give the guy a few simple things to work simple. on. And that's what he helped me with. Okay, man, hey, as long, long as your hips are low and long as your feet are moving and you're in a good athletic base. And, he, and the one thing he always told me was is that the defensive end is going to react off what you present him. Right. So you're throwing hands, are you not? Are you low? Are you, you know? And that's true. It's a game of chicken. It's, it's, um, it's yeah. all about how quickly you can process, in my opinion, what you guys are giving us. I mean, I think great rushers or good rushers even, um, yeah. they, they – they're not planners. They are planners who have a general plan, but can react to variables in which you guys throw out there in your sets. Yeah, uh, yeah. One thing, uh, watching a lot of his tape early on, he was a big jump setter. I mean, he still yeah. doesn't now, but that's basically what he does. He would just hop on people, bro. Look like he was hope, hope. Yeah, and, just one big step. And hey, that's not, and not you're in that's golf. Not nobody. That's Julius Peppers. That's yeah. that's Jason Taylor. He's doing that too, and it's and it's just he makes it look easy and effortless, and it's. That's hard to do. Yeah. It's hard to, really hard to do. How do. And, and you know, whenever he retires, whenever he hangs him up, I mean, it seems like he wants to play about 20 years. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he we, we say uh, – You know he played every game this year? It's impressive. That's impressive. It's impressive, especially off an injury. Um, and, you know, when he retires, there's a lot of guys who get into coaching because I don't think they – I don't think they know what the fuck they want to do. I think they're scared of the free time. I think, but I think he wants to get into coaching. I would, I would bet if if I could take my money to Vegas on this, I bet a million dollars. Yeah, that he's going to be a coach and a very good one because he loves the game. I think he lo he loves the game and he loves the people. That's yeah. what he loves. He loves helping people. I, and I mean, in Texas, I mean, like it is in some other states, Texas football is a religion, and, right? And uh, you know, I just his, his story is probably the more remarkable stories there is, right? So. He's just a pretty unique individual all the way around. And, you know, we both know it. A lot of guys that are great um, are Hall of Famers. They're not necessarily uh, humble guys, not necessarily guys who would help out and bring along younger folks. A lot of them feel threatened by younger folks for no reason. We talked about this, like, retirement, and we were going through it yesterday, is it's all about ego. I mean, I think half of being a football yeah. player is all about managing your ego. For it's JP not to have an ego like that, it's pretty remarkable because I would be walking around like I was king shit. <laughs> I'd be walking around with my shirt off. Just yeah. say, hey, 
just coming and going as I pleased. Exactly. We talked. We talked. Uh, we talked long and hard yesterday about, you know, um, I was telling you about retirement and how hard it is because eventually, ten years down the road, you're going to have to deal with it. How do you balance? And I mentioned this being retired. I think is is a great opportunity for you to reflect and learn things about yourself. And the number one thing you have to deal with is managing your ego because for years you get you go off of praise, positive or negative reinforcement. You're stressed. You don't yeah. have time to think. How do you, as an athlete in your prime, manage your health mentally when it comes to separating yourself yeah. from the game? I mean, a lot of times I think if you're good at what you do and then you get so obsessed with how good you are, you get really damn insecure. And so a lot of NFL players, I can speak for myself, I think a lot of guys are really insecure and you put on a persona and a we show. We all do. You put on this show, but I mean, we're just like, we're humans, bro, just like everybody else. So, um, the thing is, is communicating. Yeah, and you know, and knowing that you know, I'm lucky with with Brandon and some guys on the team that are that are very similar, so we can talk it out because we're very similar in that in that aspect. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, the ego is is the monster, and it's something. I think they made a good point the other days. If I think retirement will not be an issue if your identity is not with what you do, it's, it's not who you are. And they were talking, you know, there was they were talking about Luke Keekley, um, just the respect they had for him. So. Right. When you watch somebody I, like Luke retire, I think that guy has it all figured out because he's the smartest player I've ever played against. Yeah. You know, every time we're playing him, he's calling out, you know, six, seven out of ten plays that we're about to run. Hey, watch the screen. Fuck. Watch the trap. Fuck. Watch the outside zone. Fuck. Check, check. Check, check. Hey, do Hey. <laughs> it's a bad feeling, bro. <laughs> and he was one of the best I've ever seen. Running around like a velociraptor on that field. I think, a, <laughs> I think a, with longer arms. I think a lot of. Uh, I think a lot of this conversation, whether it's like mental health and football, which is becoming more prevalent, we talked about it, we talk about it all the time, managing, you know, the way you, the way you separate your ego from the game, and then also like when it comes time, I've been sitting here for a fall without it, we hadn't seen each other since last year, we talk all the time, but I, you know, we hadn't seen each other since we were in Philly, and um, you know, for me, a lot's changed, and, and then you see things like Luke Keekley, you see th early retirements, you saw the Andrew Luck last year, which is injury-related. Hey, and, Mar and Marshawn Lynch, what and he Marshawn said, And Marshawn Lynch. I mean, Marshawn Lynch's comments were very on point. Um, you know, and probably went over a lot of people's heads because they can't get over the packaging, some folks, yeah. with Marshawn. But when you see a Luke Keekley retire, a guy leave the game early, what do you think? Uh, well, I think, you know, with what he did and then Marshawn's kind of his words of wisdom. It was then he stepped away for a second yeah. and then came back. So I think he got very good perspective on it all. And I think he's talked to lots of older players and, you know, how the, the game comes to an end for everybody. And it really just gives you a whole new perspective and, and uh, kind of enlightenment to what really matters. And obviously, uh, you know, with this game, the, the you're going to miss, you know, the playing, but I think you're going to miss the relationships, the people that you're yeah. with. Because when the game's over, those people are still there. And that's, that's what they that's make the guys, this for. Cell phone. That's what they make. FaceTime. That, that's what they make that stress for. Yeah, yeah. That's what. But that's why I mean, like, I, I always say this because, you know, I used to be totally worried about, oh, what am I going to do without the locker room? And I'm lucky. I got, you know, I live in my hometown, so I got a bunch of good buddies I'm still tight with, and this, that, and third. But there's still guys I miss that I play with. But I think that your relationships that matter, they'll sustain themselves. Like I still talk to the guys uh, that I play with on the D-line in, in St. Louis, I still talk to different guys in New England, and I still talk to guys in Philly, and the guys you lose touch with, maybe you weren't that tight. Yeah, I think it all kind of layer by layer reveals itself. Uh, yeah, over time. Over time, um, but yeah, I think you know who your homies are and who isn't, but it yeah. is what it is. I, and you talk about Brooks, I mean, Brooks has been, uh, Brooks has been, Brooks has been a, you know, you guys don't go anywhere with each other. We joke about it. You guys, I, I'd say you fight like old ladies and uh, or an old married couple. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah. What? Why is that? That you guys are so tight, and that you guys found each other. It seems like almost immediately when he came to Philly. Uh, I don't know. I guess our, our personalities are are similar. I think just from the perfectionist point of, of football. Um, I would say he's a lot more classier than I am. Has made he's lot, classier than He's made a lot better decisions. He has? Not as impulsive decisions. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but other than that, yeah, only child. I grew up with his mom. Um, and then I think uh, 
Dude, we just love fucking with each other, man. Yeah. And sometimes it gets it gets bad. We get real pissed. Won't talk for a week. Just like you said, like a no married couple. But who's we're more always... sensitive, you or him? Uh, I w- I want to say him, but there's times where you can be sensitive. Yeah, there's times where I just shit. I'm a shit house, bro. And then <laughs> then I get exposed, and then and then we make up, and then here we go again. So uh, so that was a pretty good self awareness on your part there. Yeah. So so last thing on the Keekly thing, the brotherhood thing, the ego thing. I think the most telling thing is that Luke Keekley is one of the best linebackers that ever played the game. Mm-hmm. He retired last week. Like anything, there's a 48 hour, you know, um, window where it's kind of relevant. Yeah, and then it, and then you move on. Like, who's talking about Luke Keekley this week? Yeah, and you, and everybody's retirement thinks of some majestic ending. Yeah, and and, and it's all mirage. I'm just telling you, well, not you, everybody, but I spent years wondering what it was like to to retire and are people going to care? I'm like paying attention to, you know, you feel so good when you retire because people pour in with like compliments. And I think it's, it's all like, you ever want as a player is, is to feel validated. Yeah. That's all it is. And and, and we spent our whole careers trying to people please. We're yep. trying to, you know, it is what it is. Yep. So well, I guess when you get out of that, then it's kind of a. But the show stops. It's like with the with the Keekly thing, it's like just like a game ends, your, your big retirement, your big moment, yeah. your time of getting praised in that light ends. And then you realize that the game just moves on. And every year, you know, I watch football this year in the fall. New stars are born, new teams. It's just on to the next guy. Yeah. And so it 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 puts into perspective, you know, what's important. I mean, football is very important, but you know, there's life outside of it. And this interesting conversation that keeps occurring on, you know, just managing your ego and separating that from the game. Um, but part of having an ego is obviously the accolades, and you have three straight po- Pro Bowls now. Yeah. Uh, I was with you yesterday when you got the call that. Um, yeah, I was pretty bent out of shape. Yeah, you were bent out of shape. Uh, yeah. Tell me why. Uh, I guess um, only time I feel validated is if you make, I guess, you're seen as a pro bowler for that season means that you played up to your potential, means that you, that's how I validate it to myself. Now, there's different opinions, and there's obviously lots of guys that are very deserving that don't go. Right. Um, but I don't know. I've kind of built it up into a monster, and I, and I try to, I want to be that every year, and I feel like if I'm not that, then well, I'm declining in something, you know, like a standard. Um, but I don't know. But really, it's it's pretty. It's a big ass party down there. Kels, <laughs> I think Kels is going to be down there, and I'm kind of excited just to drink beers and hey, we're not we're not there having to fucking force feed eggs and go to practice in 30 minutes. We can just chill and drink a beer. So That's the truth. To it. Um, yeah, but part of it is it's like you know how good you are, and to me, you're a premier tackle in the league, right or left tackle. Yeah, but it, um, I was saying it all goes back to ego and how it, you feel. It's exactly it's all, right. It's all bullshit. Just what you said. It's all bullshit. And there were times where I used to get bent out of shape about being snubbed in this shit. And, like, you know, I think there's times where you just have to sit back and let the tape run. Yeah. And your tape, you know, whether you had gone this year or not, whether you had, you know, somebody had bowed out or got hurt, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change your body of work. And, again, this is yeah. – this is a this is a, a praise thing and yeah it's a ego thing and it's a, a validation thing but to three, yourself three straight so that's got to feel pretty good yeah and uh and and another thing you know along with the validation you know the uh the fan voting bullshit and all that stuff with the pro bowl is um there's this misconception that you have to fight if you don't go to a pro bowl that's one thing but also you're a right tackle at the end of the day and the way people talk about right tackles, that's a stigma that you have to fight as well. Yeah, but it's, it's changing, and it has changed since I got in the league. Why? Um, I think just because of the players that, that are over there, over the right tackle. Yeah. And that it's a lot of good ones. It's – when you go up and down the list, it's it's tough. And so um, and then I think, you know, just the market going up, uh, Trent Brown signing uh, last year, um, and he was playing left for the Patriots, played right. He's, yeah. He's going to Pro Bowl. Or I don't know if he is. I don't know if he's hurt, but – I know he made it. Um, and then, yeah, just uh, I think Ramsey for the Saints, Swartz has, has been one the best, you know, for year in, year out, and he's starting there in Cleveland. So, I don't know. I guess it's on the right tackle awareness finally. And it's, yeah, we're getting a little more awareness. I Because I agree with you. Most of the good rushers are on the left side nowadays in the NFL. Yeah. Um, and the way the game's changing, it's less physical. So, there's where it used to be that it is you, less you physical. Your, I'd, I'd say your, tackles have it pretty – 
easy compared to the guards in the in the interior guys. For sure, but you remember there was a time where the the right tackles were maulers. It was a power power side, and the other side was the. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you have to be able to block both. You have to be able to block guys with a with a plethora of moves. I mean, I remember you know Super Bowl year. Um, was that your best year, or was this your best year this past year? I feel like this year was my. I didn't get to finish it, but I feel like this year was my most was my best year. As far as my power, being able to anchor on the bull rush better, um, trying to make less uh, pre snap penalties. But that year was a murder's row. I remember just being. I was. That's I was, what I remember. There was Vaughn. There was Khalil. Yeah, it was, just, it was just every week. It was. It was. You know, JP. It was just every. You know, every yep. week it was. A, it was a different challenge. So, um, who's the biggest challenge that you you didn't expect to be a big challenge? I mean, I know you know you're that, ready for Vaughn. You're ready for Khalil. Is there one yeah, guy that yeah, jumps? Yeah, that's the thing. There, there's sometimes where I go out there and and uh, underestimate a guy, and you go out there and they, sometimes you get a good humble, humble ass whooping pie. <laughs> we went out there and played the, uh, I think it was the Colts couple, not like not this past year, but the year before. Eighteen. Yeah, it was in the J- rain. Jabal Sheard. Jabal's a good player. Yeah. Well, he was. They run a lot of stunts, bro, and he's got a heavy head like like Stephen Means. Yeah. He used to play with us, and bro, he was just. I just remember him just hit me in the sternum a few times, and I was going, "Hey, what the hell am I doing?" So yeah. I, I better I better get my act together. So, yeah, I think he's a very underrated player. Um, we had a lot of guys. I mean, the thing is, is that. I feel like the more popular you get, hey, those guys are going to try to take, going to try to tear you up. And one thing JP said, I guess, as he his career progressed, he said, "Bro, it's only going to get harder." He said, "These guys are going to try to tee off and try to, yeah. you know, is what it is." And you have to throw the ball more and more in this league now. Hey, it's, hey, when, when I watch the games, I'd I'd rather watch them throw. It and you're alone a lot. Yeah. You're so, on. You're on an talk, island. On an island. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't mean in your personal life. <laughs> I don't mean you're a fucking loser. <laughs> you're pretty cool, but you're on an you're on an island. Yeah, I mean you are. Uh, you're I'm you on Shutter's, to, Shutter's Island. Shutter Island. In the movie Shutter Island. Is it Shutter's or Shutter? Shutter Island. Shutter Island. You're on Shutter Island. Yeah. Was he crazy at the end of that movie? Or was that all? I a think dream? I was crazy at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> was was it all just? That's why I felt like. Uh, I, yeah, I definitely felt like I was insane by the time I walked. In. Another movie that made me feel crazy was. Um, uh, the one with Bradley Cooper, Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. I mean, Eagles movie, too. It's almost like a therapy f- movie. Yeah. I was, I was I, going through I, therapy the whole movie. I don't know about me. I, when I walked out, I, was, I, I felt a little bit off. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, it was a little too real. Um, so we, we've talked about the Pro Bowl. We've talked about, you know, uh, managing the ego that, that gets built up with all this praise you get. How about your roots in Texas? So, we, yeah. you know, you, you, uh, your dad was a was a rodeo dude, hey, a bull rider. Hey, we dude. talked to him on Facetime last night. How, yeah, how was that? It was like uh, I was uh, in a, I was teleported to East Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was, it, it was it was remarkable. Uh, tell me about your pops and his bull riding background, yeah, and what it's like growing up in uh, in East Texas. Texas, what was it? Groveton was your high school? Yeah, Groveton, Texas, and so I went there from. Ninth to twelfth, but I was in Cold Spring, Texas. For do you become an adult like really early when you grow up in East Texas? Is it just like you just go out there when you're a toddler? And some you, people and tougher you, than others, and you rope a steer, and you were, dig- some, you were digging yeah. ditches in a graveyard. For... No, I was I was a grave digger. So the, I mean, in so high school. So I guess you're if you can't, they call that grave digging, not digging ditches at a graveyard. Yeah, they so, call so it. So I would sound grave, like a total a narc. Digger. I would sound like a narc if I rolled up on a. On a gravesite job, yeah. If I call it, hey, let's dig some ditches. They'd be like, no, you, we're digging graves. Yeah, ditches are don't go in graveyards, bro. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know what the hell. Is, hey, are you sure? You sure you're, you're not still off after that movie? <laughs> after Shutter Island, that Shutter's Island. So, so, so your dad rode bulls, and you yes, dug, so, dug holes that they put uh, <laughs> caskets in. So yeah. So first of all, my dad's you look like a grave digger. Huh? You look like a grave digger. And let me tell you something. That's where these traps came in, pulling that damn fifty-pound anvil bar, chipping that rock there at the bottom. Hey, you, you'll learn about dirt and what it's all. Hey, there's different levels. I did. To it. I did masonry when I was in high school, and it, when I had my summer job, that was it. And I remember I did a, I do this pool job, and I was kind of doing it to to work and make some money because I wanted to put dumb accessories on my truck. I had an F one hundred and fifty. I wanted all the steel accents, 
the uh, you know the the brush guard that I didn't need. <laughs> you wanted to be cool going, going yeah, to school. Yeah, I need I, cool, very cool. I had the big Ford uh, sticker on the back with the uh, the lady laying on the the Ford emblem. Giant three foot. So I so I worked masonry just to pimp out my my truck. Yeah. But what I realized is the guys were probably working by the hour, and I was working too fast. <laughs> In retrospect, I was trying to work my ass off to be accepted by the guys on the job. Yeah, and uh, and I I was thinking about it the other day. I, I think they were looking at me funny, not because I was really strong moving all the the blue stone and whatnot. I think they were like, "This motherfucker, look at this guy. Look no, at him go. No, look at him go, and look at the. We're gonna make less money on this job. <laughs> um, we got some competition. Yeah, well, you know, we're working by the hour. So so you you worked to how long as a grave digger? Um, I think it was for a summer or two. Just a summer or two. Yeah, so, I mean, this wasn't, you know, I worked for the funeral home, so I made sure the funeral home was mowed, weeded. But you didn't have to go in the funeral home. Yeah, sometimes. I don't do funeral homes. I had to set, bro, I had to dig the, I had to dig the, the, uh, the grave, then I had to set it up for a funeral and make sure everything was set so when this casket goes on the son of a bitch, it doesn't cave in. <laughs> okay? Could you imagine that? <laughs> I could not. Yeah, I don't it want to It sucks for everybody but the guy in the casket because he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. No, but his family does. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but you didn't have to go in there and deal with anything in the, uh, like, you know, the, with the actual. You no, I did not embalm any, anybody. No, I did not go I in there. I had some buddies with. that did that, and uh, that's just not a job I'm interested in doing yeah, at all. Yeah, me um, either. <laughs> so, but your dad was a bull rider. Yeah, so my dad, bro, country dude you've ever seen. He's about 6'7, about 200 pounds. He's, uh, his hands are about this long. Um, just a goofy guy. I mean, his, his calling, he should be a stand-up comedian, to be honest with He you. was pretty funny on the FaceTime U- last night. Unique individual. He's uh, been doing construction, bro, for, for, you know, 40, 50 years. Yeah. He can do any piece of equipment. But basically what he does uh, for different subdivisions or whatever train it is, they want the runoff of the water to be a certain way. Right. So the runoff goes, uh, you know, so it can flow out, drain the land. So he does that. But before he got into that, bro, his his thing was he was a bull rider. And so anybody that's familiar with the sport of bull riding is, uh, you know, a lot of these guys are very tiny, you know, five, five six to, you know, maybe 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, and he was 6'6", six, six out there riding these bulls, bro. Yeah, he's a bit of an outlier. Does that make you more injury prone in the bull riding <laughs> world? No, I think if you're going to get it, you're going to – you can't stop what's coming. What's that movie? Uh, no Country for Old Man? No you, Country for you Old Man. You can't stop what's coming. Yeah. You're not going to outmuscle a damn 2,000-pound bull – Whatever it's meant to be is meant to be. What was the worst injury he told you about? Uh, he said he got um, stepped on. He said it collapsed both of his lungs. Fluid built up. He had to spend about a week in the hospital. Um, but he's, he's seen people die, get stepped on. Or, um, yeah, so basically I was named after uh, Lane Frost, the bull rider. Really? So, yeah. So the, the movie Eight Seconds with Luke Perry, that's kind of – at least that's what I my, thought that was a porno. At least, what, at least that's what my parents told me. I thought that was a porno. Unless they, unless they were lying to me my whole damn life. No, that's not the porno. That's a different title. <laughs> um, would you ride a bull? <laughs> it better not be a rank one. I could ride a pussy bull. I couldn't ride a what's PBR. A, what's a, a rank? Oh, PBR. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go get on one of the big Not boys. a Paps Blue Ribbon. This is no, a it's, it's not, see, The thing is, you can try to be cool and, and, and you know, do all that shit. Yeah. But you go out there and get stepped on or something, it's... Hey, it you got to see is. the movie The Rider. <laughs> have you... Have you it's a, that sounds it's like a porno. Not, it's not a porno. Okay. What is it with these bull movies? And porn? <laughs> have you seen The Rider? Anybody back there seen The Rider? <laughs> Nobody's heard of the damn Rider. <laughs> no, a lot of people have heard about it. It's a good movie. It's, an, it's an indie film, uh, you know, on your travels to the Pro Bowl. Um... I'll uh, I'll have you download it, but the guy, he was dealing with TBI, traumatic brain injury, all this stuff. He had to retire early. Yeah. But those guys are a lot like you know uh, underpaid football players where they they're gonna miss the rush. They're gonna miss the adrenaline yeah. if they're out of it. They're, like, I, I that's... could imagine a bigger adrenaline rush. And one thing is I think is kind of similar to football is that you know how you have a play and you have four or five seconds to. Yep. To get all you can out of that, and it's like they have eight seconds to stay on this bastard. Yep. And they have to live in that moment, and yep. their paycheck is. Eight seconds at a time, fast. Yep. So, and your dad told the story uh, about when he had to go to Vegas. (laughs) Yeah. So, so my dad told me he had to uh, get a job uh, from. So he went out to Vegas. So basically, he went out there to be a bartender, and he thought he's just going to go apply for a job. But whenever you go out there, you have to do like a few years of like earning your keep until you can make the big money. Yeah. So he was like, "Fuck this! I'm going to become a roofer." So. 
So he lost a little bit of money. So in he Vegas. lost all of his money, and, and he then had he to, had to, had to get a roofing job to get home <laughs> to get back so home. he could ride more bulls. So he could ride some more bulls. And that's the bulls. life of a bull rider. Yeah. Hey, uh, and also the the hotel story. Oh yeah. What he, he he was bragging. He was bragging last night on the phone about what was the story? He jumped out of a four story. Yeah, I was like, I was, I was telling Chris. This is some bull rider night. shit. Only bull riders do shit like this. And he said, uh, was his friend? First of all, his name was Billy Bob Hutto, and and he's like. Billy Bob's saying he won't jump. And I was like, so you jump for the four-story window? I said, he said, Lane, it was a five-foot pull and it was a six-story window. And he said, what do you say happened to him when he, when he hit the bottom of the pool? He said, I, I did a cannonball and need myself in a fucking jaw. <laughs> hey, legend. He is a legend. So what would you be doing if you didn't play football? Mm. You know what's funny? At the, at the, would at, you have changed at, jobs from the digging craves? Yeah, I think I'd have, I'd have done something. To get You're out a pretty there. bright guy. I think you would have been able to do whatever. You... I don't know. Hey. <laughs> I like I like to be unassuming. I like to play dumb and be you know come off surprise somebody. Sometimes. Well, I, I like that that um, that strategy. It's called uh, under promise over deliver. Yeah, the E or kind of you know just kind of move the... around and then hey hit them with something. You know. What I'll I'm tell you what though. One thing about you that it's savant level good is you have a movie recall, movie you, line I, recall. I've always been talented in stupid shit. You know, I don't know about that. You also what, what, what good best. quality does that serve? There's, there, well, there's not anything wrong with being one of the best tackles on the planet. You know, they they're paying these guys, you know, higher than, yeah, than they, you know, yeah, some CEOs salaries. of like. So so you said I was good at uh at uh movie recalls. Movie recall. Me, movie recall is pretty good. Guys, name a movie that's kind of popular back here. Dumb and Dumber. What's your favorite line? Well, big gulps, huh? Oh, well, big gulps see you in. later. Big, that's that's iconic. I could do Dumb and Dumb. I like when he goes, pills. Pills are pills good. Pills are good. <laughs> pills are good. Yeah, I'm an Adam Sandler guy. All the Billy. What's B your favorite Adam Sandler movie? Um, shit. I love Happy Gilmore. I, I also love Billy Madison. And I love the scene where Miss Lippy, she kicks him out for coming in during recess. She goes, recess is a very important time. So just like Miss Lippy, so she can have her important time too. <laughs> I totally fucked up the lines, but that was it. No, you. One of my favorite, I don't know if you fucked up the lines, but which movie is it that he goes through the shampoo and conditioner thing? Because when I shampoo and condition my hair, Billy, I swear that's Billy to, Madison. I swear to God, to this day, every time I shampoo and condition, the way I remember the order that you put on shampoo and conditioner, <laughs> hey, it's from Billy hey, Madison. You're talking to a some bitch who doesn't use shampoo and conditioner, <laughs> yeah, son. You I do, mean, what do you look, do on that beard? Hey, you want to see some cul de sac, son? Hey, you look around here. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if the camera can get off this shit. Hey, put my hat back on. Hold on. At what point? Let's did, take five. At what point did you uh, did you say I got to bick this thing? I got to oh, oh, so I was in college. It was my senior year. Um, and my friend goes, bro. He said he comes to my house. Said, bro, are you fucking losing your hair? I said, what are you fucking talking about? Went in the mirror. I've clearly been in denial for some time. <laughs> I said, bro. This shit is terrible. So I played with it my senior year, and it was bad. You know, I'd comb it over and wear my hats and have my feathered out in the back, kind of yeah. trying to look cool. And then I got to the Eagles, bro, and after getting bull rushed by Dwight Freeney and giving up fucking three sacks to Justin Houston, I just shaved that shit off and been a different man since. I think when you go through a rough time, you, you do need major. Need a transformation. You need major. I do this a lot. Like, whenever I want to go get a haircut or, you know, shave my beard or – I'm going through something, so that's always, yeah. a, a, you know, like, I don't know what that what is. What is that? I, I don't know. You think that that's so going to fix whatever problem. Is it, a, is it a Darwinism survival technique? I don't know what it is, but I think it's one of those things where you, uh, you're like, oh, everything's going to change me. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to block Dwight Freeney if I just shave my head. If I can just look tougher, have a tougher exterior, maybe I'll get tougher <laughs> on the inside, huh? And anchor down on the bull rush. But it is. It's one of those things where people are in, de in denial, and sometimes I think it does take one friend to tell you, that yeah. something's wrong with your appearance, and that's the best friend you can have that'll actually tell you, hey, man, you don't trim your nose hairs, do you? And then you're like, fuck, my nose hairs. It looks Speaking like a of nose hairs, there. I need to get one of those things. Yeah, one of those little... I don't know what that is. A well, little Remington... Seems like, hey, upper 20s, 30s, that shit just starts sprouting out, huh? Yeah, dude. What's going on with that? I don't know. But <laughs> but it takes a friend to tell you, hey... Yeah, it does. You know, uh, you should go get your teeth whitened, or, <laughs> you know, you should... You should take... <laughs> You should shave your. Uh, but that's a that's not a great haircut, man. You know, like that's what true friends do. They're honest with you. Honest. I, that's one thing about the uh, the locker room. So we got some hey, some honest some bitches. We'll we'll tell it. Which will make you 
uh, almost overly self-aware. Overly self-conscious on top of being self, you know, self-conscious. <laughs> yeah. Because you only are what your coaches tell you are. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a piece of shit, can't block nobody that week. Hey, that's what that's you are. That's how you feel about your life. That's who you are. But that's the time. thing about that's the thing about fans that I don't think they get is fans don't understand that m money money erases everything. That's it, uh, it does not. Hell no. It, I got, it amplifies it. I got, sometimes. Now listen, there's some things that I'm immune to for making a lot of money that I that regular people don't have to deal with. There's no doubt about it. I can do things off the field that um can create opportunities for me. Etc. But even people with the with the the best jobs in the world are miserable sometimes. Yeah, money can't buy happiness. Well, it's all an illusion. It's all about okay. Once you get your money, okay, I'm supposed to feel this certain way. Oh, okay. And that's almost the biggest and, disappointment. And that's something you don't think about. All you think about is getting to that point. Yeah. You don't think about what's going to happen. You know. Well, it's one of the 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 the, the, the add on is the disappointment of realizing when you reach success, you don't feel any fucking different. Yeah. In fact, you feel disappointed in the fact that you don't feel different and it just exacerbates everything. Yeah. That's what, you know, but a thing that I don't think fans get is that, you know, what the fuck were we talking about? So I'm checking notes. I don't have notes on this. We are off the notes. <laughs> we're off I, notes. Yeah. I just, I, I, oh yeah. Here's what it is. The fans. Well, the fans. Thank you. Their perception. Their perception. What their perception of you as a football player, yeah. you can't tell me that if you go play a terrible game on the field, they don't count that about against your character when they meet you on the street. Like, you can say that football and who you are as a person are separate, but as far as occupations go in this country, being a professional athlete or any entertainer, because that's what we do, we We're entertain. Entertaining. We're in the entertainment Our business. Our failures and successes are in front of millions of people. Yes. And the stakes are higher, so we get paid more. That's the way it works. Yep. But um, so so it's not a complaint, but the reality is that if I have a terrible season, I'm a joke. Yeah. And then people, it's not like the joke stops when I walk I think, off the field. The rest of your life, people look at you, and we all know players that I don't want to call people out, but that had like terrible finishes to their career yeah. or were, you know, had injury issues or made an embarrassing play. Like you think that the first thing and Bill Buckner, who just passed away a year ago, you remember him, mm -hmm. Red Sox guy, mm -hmm. ball through his legs. You don't think that followed him the rest of his life? You don't think that the the Norwood from the Bills, you you don't think that oh, enters into every interaction he has for the rest of his life? Yeah. That's the risk of playing sports. Yeah. Forget the physical stuff. That shit, you sign up for it. You know, nowadays we're, we're learning more about how football weighs on your body and this, that, and the third, but the failures, it doesn't stop when you walk off the field. People it's like, it's judge like, you that way like, the rest like, of your it's life. It's like Ray Finkel for fucking. It's, it's who it is. Yeah, it's yes. what it is, and that's fucking. You know, sometimes it is what it is. Yeah, it does follow you the rest of your life. Yeah, I have some shit's going to follow me the rest of my life. Hey, it's what it is. Hey, you just got to keep going on. You know what I'm saying? I think the only thing that's going to be following you the rest of your life are your adoring fans, Lane. My adoring fans. Yes, the ones in New England. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so. So what's on that topic? What's what's a game or a play you'd like to have back? What's the most embarrassing player game in your career? Uh, probably. Yeah, it's probably my third game. We're playing against Kansas City, and uh, I don't, you know, I really don't know a whole lot of guys in the league, but I remember going out pregame warmups, and uh, there's a dude number fifty on. His name's Justin Houston. I go look at this son of a bitch. <laughs> Is this son of a bitch doing chin ups for the game, I and mean, what the fuck's going on? What's going on with these triceps? His triceps were about fucking three times the size of mine. Guy comes out there and just fucking sweating. His eyes are fucking this big. And uh, I was doing well the whole first half. I got Mike Vick back there. You know, I'm fucking pimping. You know, I'm yeah, I mean, I'm, you get beat I'm, with a pressure. I'm blocking, yeah, I'm blocking with Mike Vick. This son of can scramble out, you know, get 20 yards. That's who he is. And then, like, the last, it was the fourth quarter, bro, fucking three sacks in a row. It was, I was trying to jump. What happened was I was vertical setting and uh, he was coming in bull rushing me. And so inside shoulder. And so I was trying to jump set him. The, the sacks I gave up was jump sets. And so I went out there over aggressive trying to get on him fast. He just swiped the fuck out of me three times, bro. Same shit. Yeah. Went out there and uh, yeah, got back in the locker room before I even take off my pants. I got fucking less bowing. <laughs> I love you, Les, but. Hey, Les is actually pretty cool. He won't even say something. But He'll the Les, Les just says a statement. a statement. So he got beat with three sacks today. Yeah, it's not a question. It's a, yeah. How do you feel? 
No, no, that's a question. Yeah. He'll he'll yeah. be he'll uh, be like Justin Houston's pretty good at football. Yeah, I'll say, yeah. You see the fucking those three sacks he got on me? <laughs> fucking destroyed me. Now we like Les. Les is funny as fuck, but you know <laughs> he is. Les will come in hot with He will come in with, with a statement. Things. With a statement. And you're like, yo, Les, I don't know. I don't know what Les, you, I don't I don't know what to say to what's, you. What's what's the Philly media like? Before I ask you the tail end of uh, the flip side of the worst game ever. It is always entertaining, bro. You do not know what the hell you're going to get asked. Yeah. Lock, it's it's funny, though. Our locker room is pretty narrow. Long, It's a long, narrow locker room. And just you're coming after practice and the whole son of a bitch is full. Mm-hmm. They're all just sitting there waiting for you. Yeah, but that's that's as far as similarities between Texas and, and Philly, as far as football. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's a religion. Same type of thing. Yeah. Same type of thing. It's Catholics and Christians. It's just a different <laughs> branch of the, yes. uh, the faith. Yes. Um <laughs> Has there been an instance where a reporter really pissed you off by doing something out of line? What are the rules of engagement with reporters? Shit. I think they're still being written. <laughs> I don't think there is a whole lot of hey. <laughs> it's just the Wild West, bro. People, yeah. people want some damn answers. The people need their answers. But what's your pet peeve? Like, you know, for me, uh, there's my- certain things that I'll always, you see me, I treat everybody with respect, reporters, yeah. this, that, and third. But, but there's certain things that I do not, take kindly to yeah my only pet peeve is uh if i'm bare ass there in, a, in the locker room and i'm trying to get dressed don't have a microphone by my ass while i'm trying to get dressed and, and i'm trying to talk maybe they're to trying you. to hear what's going on down there maybe they... <laughs> well i guess i've been talking out my ass sometimes so they <laughs> they put the microphone there sometimes well so i always get on this soapbox about we are like the only industry where it's a-okay to just camp out in our dressing room yep and look at our dicks to be like you know that's it's not like, that it's... people are looking at your dicks but i'm just saying that it's kind of unfair to mandate that I have to walk around naked around a bunch of people that want answers from me. Yes. I know there's not a lot of other ways to do open locker room. Well, you know, it's hard. The, the hardest part's after a game because there's shit everywhere. There's fucking, you know, helmets, there's equipment, there's towels everywhere. You're trying to get dressed and it's just. It's it, tight too. It, it, after games, it's tight. tight. So you, I'm, know, you get a, what, a 10 minute window for the media can come in and yeah. hey, it is what it is. How do they fix it? <laughs> hey. Because okay. I don't like it. I don't like it either. Hey, everybody dressed? Everybody good? Yeah, well, that's going to take a while because everybody needs to get on the bus, too. And we got to get going. Yeah. But even like practice, it's tough. It's, I'm not demonizing the media for this because they've been given a slot that they yeah. can talk to players. Yeah. I just think it's kind of fucked up that we can, we can all be with our units out, you know, trying to get dressed. And as much as we respect everybody's privacy, rightfully so in society, yeah. we're just pieces of meat mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, and then my brother got got so my brother got uh in the background of somebody's IG live that you know was with, with meet out this year and yeah. and uh everybody thinks it's a, it's a funny thing it's like it's not it's it's actually not to be naked in front of millions of people naked and afraid and not so even bad, on the damn discovery channel so bad that to me you know you get this dead spin site that um you know the most self-righteous fucking site in the world um then posts an article with a link to the IG Live, like, hey, and if you want to see his dick, yeah, here it is. Here it is. It's just a hyperlink away. You just got to click on our- That's all um, you got to do. That's all you got to do. But we're really good people here. Let's fucking laugh. Hey, hey, hey but if you want to, hey, a little chuckle, hey, come on. So I, I think- Try uh, to hit your fingertip. I think, uh, I think the piece of meat thing is, 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 it's a real phenomenon that a lot of people don't think about. It's just, you know, in any other workplace, that would be kind of unacceptable. So the flip side to your worst game uh, what was the, the game that you felt like invincible? Mm. You played a lot of good rushers. Man, there was one time in college. I got hit. Okay, <laughs> funny ass yeah, story. Stu's name was, I think his name was Jake Latimer, like Latimer from the program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long hair. We're playing Iowa State. Guy has hair down to his shoulders, all silver teeth. He goes over there and we we have a RPO where I'm man on the backside. Yeah. And he just kind of can't get away from me. Yeah. Uppercuts me in the balls, bro. Hard as fuck. Did he? Hard. Next play, I told him I was going to fucking kill him. Didn't didn't even go against him, but we had a deuce block. And I fucking threw the three technique, bro, over just out of the damn frame. and <laughs> went up to the linebacker. Just, ah, ah. So you're like a video game that was boss. A, that was the funnest play of my career. So he thought that you you were like a video game boss that if you got hit in the balls, you were going to die. Hey, but I it actually it was like a trigger point for you. <laughs> it, it was trigger point therapy. You, you got stronger. 
You don't hit Lane Johnson in the, it was like, in the uh, sack because he'll turn into. It's I was a, like, it's uh, like he's on PCP when you hit him in the ball. I've turned into uh, Gordon off a of dodgeball, the old man with the glasses when he got when he got angry. That's who I turned into. Fucking guy. See the the movie recall is terrific. These guys are getting ready for the Super Bowl now, and yep. that was a game that you played very well. By the way, I thought you might say that one, but I I think you're done trolling. Um, what are these guys getting ready to do here? I mean, obviously we know what what it's like on the yes. field, but the next two weeks is like worse yeah. than a bowl game. Yes. Well, I thought they did a pretty good job. Well, it's just you have obligations there. So obviously you have your practice. Uh, you know, you're at a new a new spot. You have lots of family there wanting to see you. So, um, but you still have to maintain your practice schedule and and kind of the consistency of that. So, the hardest part is is you know we always say uh, you know eliminate distractions was just trying to. Maintain as close to a schedule as you could as back home, far as not staying up too late, you out too late, seeing the family, just trying to keep it normal. But yes, it is. You're going to have lots of media. But at the same time, man, it's, it's fun. It's the Super Bowl. Hey, you're ready for it. Um, now, this is going to be one of the more exciting ones, I think, in a long time, as far as the, the star power, the, the speed, the, the defenses. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. What do you think about these? Uh, if you're an offensive lineman, who's the scariest dude? Uh, playing in the game up front? Uh, D Ford's pretty good, talented. Uh, Frank Clark, I thought, was extremely underrated. We talked about yesterday in yeah, Seattle. Frank, Frank. So Frank's a, a beast. Um, Bosa's come on the scene right away. Bosa's a beast. Uh, and Bosa's pretty similar to his brother, man. He's so he's so damn good with his hands. And he, yeah. he does never lets somebody get a hold of his hands. Yep. And whenever a guy, you know, turns and is not squared line of scrimmage, he has a good way of getting those hips around. Yeah. Armstead, uh, very good. Buckner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're just. Chris Jones. Forgot about hey, Chris Jones. Chris Jones had my, like 15 sacks he, last year. He'd be my answer and didn't go to the Pro Bowl, which which goes that, to show that, that it doesn't was fucking matter. Um, but congrats. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a beast. Uh, God, I think he is similar to Fletch. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean he's he's been he's been dominant like Fletch. Yeah, he's a he beast. doesn't look great in pads. I mean he looks kind of sloppy. pretty damn big to me. Well, he, I'm just saying he doesn't. He kind of when he came on the scene, I was like, who's uh, this guy? He's unassuming a little bit. A little bit unassuming. But a big man uh, mm -hmm. and somebody that moves really well. He's got, he's got the jab step. He's got the swipe. Yep. And then he can just run you over. Yeah. How do you see that game playing out? Whew. Well, I, people don't know. Uh, George Kittle's dad, Bruce, was my coach in college. So I would like to see Kittle get one. But yeah. also, And you knew Kittle from way back then then since his dad was yeah, your coach. So, yeah, whenever he was in high school there in Norman, he was playing receiver. Did you tell he was going to be a psycho? Who? George? Kittle. Uh, he wasn't around that much. He was just like he is now. He's always happy, bro. I've never seen him have a bad day. Yeah, that's how that's how Bruce was too. Man. Yeah, so much. Hey, never heard bad news in his life. Right. Where were we? All right. Okay. Super. Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. And then one of my best friends uh, plays for Kansas City. James Winchester, long snapper. Oh, I didn't know that. So, man, I wish both of them could win. I think it's going to go down to the defense because their offenses are just, you know, what did Jimmy throw? Eight eight, eight passes, passes the other day. He's got to throw more than that probably. And. uh and the running back was with us. Yeah. Raheem. Yeah. Yeah. Out there killing. Here's the thing about that, though. When people point out that, hey, holy shit, Chip Kelly couldn't get anything out of him and cut him. And that, well, so did six other teams. I mean, that just goes to show how good Shanahan is at, at designing these plays. And yeah. some of the holes he was running through the other day were, yeah. That's not taking anything away from this kid. I couldn't get cut three times and, and yeah. get, get off, uh, get back up. I mean, thinking about some guys, and we both had it good where, you know, we were draft picks and we both got big contracts, second contracts and whatnot. You know, we've never had to scrap the way some of these guys do that. that I mean, a lot of guys, people don't realize, live in holiday inns. Like, it's not like every football player is no well, your you, prototypical, you know, any given Sunday character. No, and, and ballers, I think, you know, they have that kind of representation. Misconception. misconception of what a football player is. No, a lot of it's people are out there hungry, bro. People are, you know, staying in. Local hotels and little apartments right by the stadium. These guys are hungry, bro. They're in, that's they're getting cut one week. They're getting cut. picked up on a practice Hell squad. Yes. I had this preconceived notion that every pro football player was rich, yeah. and and I'm they, we're all blessed. Yeah. I mean, no doubt about it. But the guys that don't that make league minimum, there's not a lot of long term job security. So even if you pull one year's paycheck down or a practice squad, 
you still got to worry about whatever you do the rest so, of your life. It's not like football is something that you can show on your end resume. All, end all be all. Yeah. It's not end all be all. And so a guy like Mosert who's been on his seventh team, think about all the ego hits that it took yes. to get to where he is. So I really tip my cap to That's him. That's how kind of James Harrison was too. Well, he was yeah. like five teams and then the guy, you know, does what he does. And Cam Wake was in the CFL. Cam Wake. Hey, that guy. Yeah, we had the scrimmage gym a couple years ago, remember? Yeah, I remember that. It was yeah. very hot. It was Yeah, well, first of all, it was him and Sue. And I was going, hey, this ain't the most impressive-looking fucking side ever. Yeah. Studs. He's also a guy that looks like he can give you 30 chin-ups on command. Cameron Wake. <laughs> no doubt about no, it. No, no question. I'm not sure I can do five pull-ups. Maybe that's my <laughs> problem. Um, you talk about the Super Bowl that year. What do you remember about that Super Bowl and and, uh, and being in Minneapolis and the Mall of America? and the experience? Yeah, it was uh, – first of all, it was cold as shit outside. So cold. Uh, so, no interaction outside. Uh, I think it all went by pretty fast. It was all kind of a blur. Even that, you know, the whole playoff thing. Just because I feel like we didn't put any pressure on ourselves because, we, you know, as you know, we weren't expected to do shit. And so, it was kind of, well, if we can do this, man, we're going to be heroes. You know, we're going to do good here. If we can win this game, man, we – yeah, everybody's already counted us out. So, so what, do you, what do you remember about the oranges, or origin, origin of the, the dog mask? Because – it was you. Yeah, but we, uh, we were sitting there. I think we were talking about all the, you know, people, Peter King Peter King said this, and we had all the articles posted kind of all over the building, just everywhere, in the bathrooms. Every every stall has, hey, this is what you're expected to do, and uh, was get, which was get our ass kicked. So. And then uh, you said, hey, man, since we're underdogs, we should get some underdog masks. <laughs> and it looked and sounded like the dumbest idea. It was. It sounded fucking stupid. But like, then it ended up well, on the inside just, of our I'm Super Bowl. I'm stupid enough to go buy something like that. <laughs> no, but you were on the purchase. So we were sitting on the training room table. I remember bringing it up, and you loved it. And I said, well, I'm kind of I'm kind of slammed right now. I can't really – I don't think I can get this order in. Do you think you can handle this? And you were like, yep, we'll get this thing ordered. Somehow you found – initially, I don't think it was supposed to be a bulldog. Or I don't think it was supposed German to be Shepherd. a German Shepherd. I think we were looking for some other breed. Yeah, but I mean, are, are you are you trying to get a dachshund mask and put it on? Are you trying to put a Yorkie, a Yorkshire no, Terrier? I don't mask want on? the one that uh, Bo had on. Bo had that weak ass <laughs> looking dog. Bo had the never ending story dog <laughs> yeah. fucking face on. Uh, Aslam. <laughs> yeah. Was that his name? What was his name? Yeah, Aslam. Yeah. Do you remember any lines from that movie? No, I just know the main. The never ending story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. You got a great voice. Uh, but I just remember the first game we put those masks on, I was kind of like, fuck, okay, let's do it. But, you know, <laughs> we could we could turn into a meme, like, real quick. This was the year that was Crying Jordan. Risk reward. I was ready to be Crying Jordan. I've been Crying Jordan before. You have? Oh, yeah. How'd they get you? <laughs> so when you get suspended a couple times, hey, you'll, you'll find yourself <laughs> on plenty of damn memes, huh? I promise you. How did your crying Jordan face look? Fuck, it was everywhere, son. It was me walking off the field, me sitting on the bench, me taking a piss, just fucking cry face. They had pictures of you taking a piss? <laughs> no, I haven't made that up. <laughs> I was trying to be funny. I was, I was over trying. Um, so, so that year was special. Obviously, the underdog thing, that whole thing. We had the, the parade. The parade was What do funny. you remember about the parade? I just remember Kelsey. I was just chasing Kelsey the whole, whole damn – we were on one bus to another – slapping people's hands i just remember looking everywhere and it was like like i was in call of duty there's just people everywhere there's people in fucking trees there's people in buildings there's people coming out of windows there's people coming out of the damn sewers there's people there's people everywhere there's, and everybody had but beer. unlike call of duty they like you they like you they want to be your friend they're not trying to kill you they want to be your friend it's just the opposite call a friendship call a friendship and by the end of the day how about when we were standing behind the the podium and they were like, y'all want to talk? Yeah, my eyes were fucking going <laughs> cross-eyed. I was so blurred. We were so fucking <laughs> wrecked. And and it's one of those things where like, this is a terrible idea, but I also don't know when we'll ever be able to do this again, so we might as well. And we didn't talk about a plan. We didn't. We were just trying to, just really trying to represent Stone Cold Steve Austin to the best of our abilities. We tried. We tried. Um, and people loved it. Uh, yeah, I think they, yeah. People enjoyed it. If, if I had to do it all over again, if I knew I was going to speak, I may have come up with something a little bit longer, maybe. No, it was short and sweet, and that was great. You left Kelsey to do the the hard work. Um, but, you know, that parade ends, um, and 
you know, that year was special. There was there was magic that year. I mean, I just felt like we talked about it. Just, it. it felt like every game we were going to go in and win. There wasn't, and there wasn't a question. There wasn't a fake, uh, you know, bravado. Didn't have to do a whole lot of rah-rah. It was like, we got the talent to kick ass. We, we had, had the, the right people. We had the right people. We had the hunger. And you could sense that shit in OTAs. You could, you could, you could see it. You're like, well, you know, I've been around some teams. I've seen some good football teams. This, yeah. So the hardest part is 18 trying to mm-hmm. – replicate it and there's a a fine line when you when you win a super bowl between ignoring the elephant in the room and then like leaning into it too much like talking about hey we're not gonna you know we're not gonna fall in this trap but like you yeah. talk about it all day and that's all you're that's talking all you're about, talking is, about. Yeah, is a trap don't fall in the trap don't fall in the trap. so how do you do it if you're a coach after a super bowl how do you do it i don't know son we found that damn trap and we were <laughs> Had to turn so fast, turn that damn cream into butter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do know. Two mice fell in a bucket of cream, huh? <laughs> That's the old, the old adage that so many people use. Catch me if you can. That's where it came. Okay, from. catch me, catch me if you can. Yeah. <laughs> so we were drowning at first. Yeah. We, then we resurrected and turned yeah. it. Yeah. It was, you know, it was tough, and I think that's where I found a newfound appreciation for, I can't name their names, but for that team, just because they're expected to do that year in year out, and yeah, you do. It is a new change of perception. It is a new focus because. Um, you could feel when the teams that you played, they were trying to tear your ass up. Oh yeah, the Super Bowl champs. Uh, let's get let's let's make a statement, and that was true. And then that that carries into even you know this year. I felt like this past year, you guys still had a target on your back, but you had a ton of injuries. Yeah, it was man. Yeah, just injuries. Um, you know, Malik. I think it was the first game. Deshaun um, and Malik. I think was going to have a prime for a big year, man. Him mm-hmm. and Fletch here in the middle. Uh, and he's a great dude too, great teammate. Um, and really, that's the way it's been. But you know what was so impressive about this year is that um, you know one guy I really like a lot is, is Greg Ward, just because he was scout team a lot. But just a guy that really comes in and doesn't, he never, he's always positive. And then when he got his chance to do good, he goes up there and balls. And so just having that, and then having those 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 young guys, the hungry guys coming in and doing what they do, and being able to compete. Um, that was tough. It ended the way it ended, but um, you know, I was I was impressed with how Carson. You know, as you know, he deals with he deals a lot of bullshit. He's walking around dog shit all the time, and he has to do he has to be careful not to step in any of it. Right. So I think he did a great job, and really, moving forward, fix a few things, and we'll be good. Listen, uh, you look at the NFC. I thought it was supposed to be so deep and and whatnot, and in actuality, I looked at it and. If you guys stay healthy, I think you're the second best team in the NFC when you all things close. are said and done. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's the way it is. Every team has injuries, but yep. there's a lot to look forward to if you're an Eagles fan, and there was a lot to to say that this team would have been very good. There's there's two players or – or um, there's a couple moments I remember this year that kind of embodied the team, in my opinion. One was Greg Ward's coming out. You mentioned him. Mm-hmm. He was the, the prototypical guy who stepped up uh, out of this depth role, and people hadn't heard of him, but everybody on our team knew who he was. Mm-hmm. We all respected him, at least, and this was even before this year. And then the other was McCown running around with a torn hamstring, trying yeah, to do everything favorite, favorite he can. Guys ever. Yeah. Yeah. What did he mean? <clears throat> he was pretty similar to you in the fact that he would had a lot of wisdom. He had a good insight on people, and he knew how to motivate and get people. I guess get the team kind of coordinated and, and doing it without rubbing anybody the wrong way. And he just always had a good energy. Just, yeah. you know, here he is out there 40 years old, used to see the way he practices. It is fucking fun to watch. It is funny to watch. Energy all day. Uh, and then just, uh, you know, his insight. You know, yeah. he's played, what, 18 years. You don't you don't stick around 18 years without, you know, being good. So, right. um yeah, it was a lot of fun. He was he was a lot of fun to be around. There was a lot to be proud of this year, even. And I thought in the beginning of the year, if I'm being honest, uh, there was a point where I was like, well, this team, Philly's going to always resent this team because they, they don't seem like they have it. There were moments where y- you weren't sure if the team had it. And by the end of the year, I think it flipped from everybody being disappointed to everybody being super fucking proud of that team because yeah, the, the resiliency, way, the way you guys rallied. And it's, some, and it's something I think comes from Doug. It comes from a whole bunch of factors. Where you guys, when when your backs are against the wall, that's when you get the best. So how do you in next year not wait till the back is against the wall? You don't fall in that trap. Yeah. You, you don't set yourself. You got to go in there with no expectations. And some, uh, you know, one one thing I've done since I've been in the league is every now and then, man, hey, you got to talk to a sports psychologist. You got to get how, how do I attack this game? How can I get a reset button? And one thing he he kind of told me was, you got to be Mike Myers from Halloween. That's who you got to be. Go on. Does Mike Myers ever show any emotion? No. No. He also has a mask on, so it's not fair. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. 
Is Mike Myers always coming to kill? Yeah. Does Mike Myers get stabbed and you think he's dead? And does Mike Myers keep coming back? Yeah, that's what Mike Myers does. So you got to be like him. Yeah, I, I think that works in sports psychology. <laughs> it doesn't work so much. It, I don't think you hear a lot of Mike Myers re- references. Uh, well, you heard it now. I like it. I might try to be Mike, more like Mike Myers on this pod. Yeah. No emotion. Zero. For those of you listening, we were just <laughs> staring at the camera. Um, <laughs> before I let you go, um, I wanted to hit you with a, with a lightning round. Okay. Some quick hitters. All right. If you could be any animal, what would you be? Probably a jaguar after I saw one of those some bitches take a caiman out of the water after he dove in the water and in the river and dragged that caiman up by his neck. And that was pretty impressive. That's all you got? Yeah. Just that's all it took? That's all it took. Okay, a jaguar. Mm-hmm. That's a, a ja- not a jaguar? A jaguar. <laughs> a jaguar. Oh, man. How about Apocalypto? Jaguar paw? What? Jaguar paw from Apocalypto. Do you remember the movie Apocalypto? No. You've seen a lot of movies. You haven't seen Apocalypto. I haven't seen it. I must That's confess. shameful. I apologize. Uh, how about the stamina on those fucking guys in Apocalypto? They, you're not going to realize this, but the, the viewers and listeners... These guys ran in full sprint for like three days straight. It was unbelievable. They were like Mike Myers. Um, if you could be in any movie sequel and play a, a lead, what movie would it be? Ooh, damn it. Yeah. Should have asked me this pre because I'd have a good, had a damn good answer. Okay, what's your close. WWE wrestling name and what's, uh, what's your, your persona? Because this is a, a, a distinct possibility for you after football. Just call me Big Dave Johnson. Big Dave Johnson? So what's so so? What's your getup look like? Are you in one of those old school like? I'm not trying to look like you know something off a of hee haw, but I'm trying to look. I'm trying to represent who I am. Hey, I am country. I'm not trying to duplicate anybody. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. But uh, is it going to be camo in your getup? You know, I'm not. I'm pretty country, but I don't come off. Do I come off as that country? No, 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 no. Um, I don't. Do, know. Your voice sounds. Yeah, the boys. like you might have uh, might have grew up next to Bobby Boucher. Like you might be able to sleep in a uh, in a dead animal to stay warm, <laughs> like the Revenant. Yeah, <laughs> so, hey, I do the Revenant sequel. That's a that's a that'd be pretty awesome. Just to suffer for a few months. Of Revenant time. sequel would be good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say you have to have any uh, have any camp. It, are is the Sooner mascot a cheater? Uh, technically, a damn uh, sooner is, yeah. Will they you had, explain they, to the people what it is? So I guess in the was it 1800s, yeah. uh, excuse me if I'm wrong, uh, they had the uh, Oklahoma land run where people were pretty much at a starting point, and when they fire the gun, you can go out and go claim your land. Well, the Sooners were the guys that were already out there in the land claiming their stake, Yeah, where they wanted to go before the gun was ever shot. So that's kind of cheaters. Yeah. Okay. Um, any any progress on a, on a sequel? Well, you already you already gave me one. Uh, how about a desert island? You can only bring one object. What's it going to be? Well, Chris, it's probably going to be some water, man. You know, that's that's going to work well for me because of the water boys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on a desert island. There's no water. Yeah, I need fucking water to survive. How about one person? One person? Yeah. Mm. Outside of your family. Outside, of, I could. You could be one because we don't ever really fight too much. Uh, you have a good uh, way of, you have good wisdom, uh, years over me and experience. Getting my point across without being a uh, Yeah, a you dick. just said uh, superior wisdom. Uh, who else got to go? Probably my psychologist. <laughs> That's who I could go That'd with. be good. Probably need him every few days to regroup. Um, okay, okay. And, and if there was one sport you could play professionally, if not, uh, if not in the NFL, what would it Basketball. be? Basketball. All day. Bro, there is nothing better than crossing a son bitch up. And taking that sandwich to the hole and dunking on the son of a bitch and going down that court and, and, and beating your chest. Now, I did it on about, on about five foot six white dudes, so I couldn't imagine what it'd be like <laughs> to dunk know. on, you know, Kevin Durant or yeah, something. Yeah, could you imagine? No, I, I could not imagine. Could you, could you imagine having that, first of all, having that hang time in the air? And I just... could not imagine. I'm, I'm nervous to, you know, <laughs> what's impressive is when you go to the NBA down out game? of a bed of a pickup truck. <laughs> I'm nervous of how, if my back's going to give out. If I, at this point, I, hey, listen, I went the second half of my career and played some really good football at times, but I probably couldn't jump 
to save my life. I was afraid to jump vertically uh, because I was afraid of popping my Achilles <laughs> as a professional athlete. Yeah. I mean, so there's been, I, there's days, hey, there's days when that's happened. How about a country you really want to visit? A country? Hmm. Anywhere in the world. Where would I want to go? Probably New Zealand. New Zealand. What would you do there? I don't know. I just, I really like the Lord of the Rings and like the, what do you call it? Geography or topography? Which one makes me sound more intelligent? Both. Okay. I like the topography of that place. There's just. Well, yeah, the, the topography would be correct there, I believe. So I just, uh, they have red state. It's, it's just interesting people there. Do you think you could do Naked and Afraid? I keep asking. I keep, we, we always have a discussion. I would love to do it just so I could see two people suffer. There would be, that'd be the funniest <laughs> shit of all time. First thing I'm doing is getting in some damn mud. You're not about to fucking eat me up. Like in Predator? Yeah. When he gets covered in mud yeah. so he could hide from Predator? Yeah. I'm Another on, movie. I'm hiding from mosquitoes. So, so do you remember when Mike Bennett said that, Mike Bennett used to tell me, hey, we need to be on Naked and Afraid, bro. It'd be hilarious. Yeah. I want you and Michael Bennett to be on Naked and Afraid. What do you think would happen? It'd be the funniest shit of all time. And I think y'all would be, become so hungry and so delusional that y'all's conversations would just be amplified. And I would like to get done on camera. I've said this before. I would kill Mike Bennett so fast <laughs> for food because by the third day, I would be so fucking irritated with him. <laughs> I have to call you an Uber to the airport. Okay. So what's your speed going to be in the Pro Bowl? What's my speed? Yeah. Last year, son, it was, it was, damn, it was damn right embarrassing. So, but, but what's the conversation around that at this point? Hey, bro, you good? Are you good? You going to go hard? No, yeah, bro, I'm going to be cool. And then every now and then they'll fucking go hard. We're like, hey, we had an agreement. Who's the tempo violator? Who are you most worried about tempo violating in the Pro Shit. Bowl? Probably, one, probably Watt if he's going. Oh, that guy just goes hard every, every play, whenever. Um, yeah. If okay, it, J.J. Watt it is. Or T.J. Watt. I'm going to make this an Uber XL. Hey, and if Kerrigan was there, he'd be going the hardest. Oh, Kerrigan would. Hey, no question. What's blocking Kerrigan like? <sighs> Fuck. It's like a fucking honey badger, bro. It's like Groundhog Day. Just Yeah, he just won't. Same rush, you. same rush. And same. he won't go away. And if you fuck around, he's going to Groundhog you. Because <laughs> he does have superior inside power when he gets you. He, he likes to catch you right under this armpit, son, and do levitation on you. A little levitation. He's levitated me before for some sacks. So, last question before I let you go for Eagles yeah. fans, and thank you for joining us, Lane Johnson. As a, uh, it turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, thank you. I you act surprised, like we have a <laughs> shitty operation here. And we <laughs> and we did this with no. They asked me before I sat down, like, do you need any notes? You good? Like, I'm like, no, I know this pr guy pretty good. We're just having a conversation. Um, Jeffrey's on the way in a to Toyota Highlander. All right. Well, hey, I gotta. <laughs> I got to wear these slippers. I didn't bring any shoes. He's going to be just disgusted with the way it smells in the I'm going to get downrated because of your foot odor. <laughs> well, hey, man, if you have a size, if you have some extra shoes around here. I don't have you. any size 16. My last question for people who are out there watching who are Eagles fans, and Lane was gracious enough to join us. He even addressed Pat's Nation directly, uh, sort of. And uh, But for Eagles fans, give me one uh, or two uh, next up type guys next in line type guys uh for the birds who, who are going to break out next year i think miles sanders is just going to become God, he's uh, good. just a more of a freakazoid than what he is um and i think you know as far as deshaun's demeanor i think deshaun really wants to get get healthy and just go out there and do what he started and i think you could see it so i mean he's he's been around the block he's not a newcomer but yeah and he looks healthy now yeah good for him yeah. okay well that was Lane Johnson, now three-time Pro Bowler, All-Pro, one of the best tackles I ever played against. Um, tremendous dude, tremendous dude. And thanks for joining us on Green Light Lane. Will, will you come back and see us? Yeah, hey, you gave me a damn invitation. Come, hey, back, be here. come back to God's country? Hey, it is God's country. I was, I'm still impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed here in Charlottesville. You heard it here, Lane Johnson. He's huge. He's taken up the entire chair. It's the frame. I mean, since Kyle Long was here, I haven't seen anybody fill the frame out like this. Uh, Are you feeling it out like Kyle Long? No, Kyle Long's a big son of a bitch. <laughs> since so much a bit like a full blown Gerber baby at three forty. <laughs> He's built like a Gerber baby. Very proportionate. Very just big. What's Brandon Brooks built like? I can't say it, bro. He'll get fucking pissed. <laughs> I used to say he built like Barney. <laughs> well, you just did say it. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what he tells me now? What? Why don't you go mind your fucking bald-headed business? <laughs> when he said that to me the first time? Yeah. Lost my mind. Funniest shit I've ever heard. Well, Jeffrey's arrived. 
So right. go get your Uber, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Right. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay, okay. Yes, coach.